Blooming and halo effect have been recurring discussion points in just about every LCD-based TV review you might have read or watched for like over a decade. And they still are to this day. But you know what? I think it might be time to let them go. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you've landed on this video wanting to learn a little more about this blooming or halo stuff you've been hearing about, then I'm happy to report I'm gonna explain exactly what they are and why TV reviewers are always bringing them up. Then, after that, I wanna share my newly found perspective on these two LCD slash LED performance aspects. Specifically, why I don't think they deserve nearly as much attention today as they've been given in the past. Because I know they're gonna come in hot and heavy anyway, I just wanna let you know I welcome your comments down below. I just ask that you keep it civil, please. Ah, who am I kidding? Some of you won't, that's YouTube, I guess. But since you're here, I do wanna say thanks for watching and whether you agree with me or not, consider slapping a like on this video if you appreciate this kind of content and want to see more. And if you do wanna see more, Subscribing is a great way to make sure that happens. Thanks for your support. We're getting really close to a million subs. Okay, so in order to understand what blooming and or halo effect is, are, you need to know a little bit about how LCD-based TVs work. Now, don't worry, this isn't gonna be a dry science lesson. I'll make it quick. So LCD-based TVs are what you call transmissive displays. The light you see is created by a backlight, a light source at the back of the TV. Now, back in the early days of LCD TVs, the backlight was an old school compact fluorescent light bulb. Today, most LCD TVs use LED lights, which is why we colloquially call these TVs LED TVs. But even in the early days of using LEDs, many TVs had the backlights at the edges of the TV. That was a way to make the TV super thin. Regardless of what kind of backlight is used or where it's placed, that light travels through a bunch of layers, including a color filter. And whether you see the light coming out as part of the picture depends on the LCD layer. You can think of LCD cells as little shutters that open and close. When they're open, you see light. And when they're closed, you don't see light. Mostly. See, that's where the blooming and halo effect come in. Because an LCD cell can't completely block out the light behind it, some light ends up bleeding through. And that's no big deal when you have a big bright image on the screen, but if you have big areas of darkness on the screen, areas that should be black, the light bleed causes problems. An area that should be black could turn a dark milky gray. What's more, as the image on the screen shifts, you might actually be able to see the lights behind the screen coming on and turning off. That's where the terms blooming and halo come in. Now, the two terms are often used interchangeably today, but again, in the early days, Blooming was the term TV and display enthusiasts kind of adopted to describe this bloom of light we would see in areas on the screen, especially in edge-lit TVs where there'd be this bloom coming up from the top or the bottom of the TV, sometimes from the sides. And that seemed to occupy that one section of the screen, but maybe not the center. Halo is kind of an extension of blooming, I guess you could say. See, as we moved into the times where we would get a full array of LEDs behind the screen, and those LEDs could be grouped into individual zones that could be turned on or off, that better backlight control started to reduce blooming as we knew it. But the artifact that was left over was halo. And this meant that if you had a picture of the moon or a starship against a night sky, you might see a halo of light around that bright object on an otherwise black background. Now, because there's no official body around to specify that blooming is this and halo is that, some folks started talking about halo effect while others just kept on talking about blooming. But the important thing here is that light bled through the screen where you didn't want it to and made areas that should be dark or pitch black not so dark and very much not pitch black. So now you know what blooming and halo were slash are if you didn't already. Now let's add some context to this. Blooming or halo were just kind of part of the deal with an LCD based TV and might not have been a big turnoff for folks if it weren't for the fact that plasma TVs, a kind of emissive display that made its own light at the pixel level, no LEDs involved, 
Plasma had no problems of the sort. The term inky blacks became one of the hallmarks of a plasma TV. But then, as many of you know, plasma TVs went away. And maybe we would have just had to deal with backlight problems if it weren't for OLED TV technology, which came along and picked up the inky blacks mantle from plasma TVs. So if you weren't around dissecting TVs several years ago, you might not be aware that there was a time several years back when blooming and halo on LCD-based TVs was actually pretty bad. Like, it was a serious distraction. And there was plenty reason to hate it when you had plasma or OLED TVs that didn't cause these problems at all. And by problems, I mean, let's be honest, we're just talking about TVs here. This isn't like an illness that actually kills people. But if you really enjoyed a beautiful picture on a TV and you watched your TV in a dark room, say in your bedroom at night, Blooming or Halo was very much in your face and annoying, especially if you watched with subtitles or closed captions on where you'd have bright white text sitting right over letterbox bars that were supposed to be black and you just couldn't not see this big bloom of light coming and going every time the text popped up and then went away. It was like, ugh, that's awful then a sigh of relief, ah, oh, that's better. Then text comes back and you're like, ah, oh, that's awful again. Go back to not being there. Now, you'll notice I've been talking in the past tense and there's a reason for that. As recently as three years ago, even the most expensive flagship LCD TVs among various manufacturers had pretty wide variances in terms of how much blooming they exhibited. Most of them though were way, way better than TVs of the past. And at the same time, mid-level TVs three or so years ago just didn't do much to mitigate blooming at all. They may have had some local dimming zones to help out, but they were limited and didn't do much to address the issue. Today though, today is a whole different ball game. Now, even mid-tier TVs have a high number of local dimming zones and perform as well as top-tier TVs did just three years ago. And the top-tier TVs of today, some of them use thousands of mini LED backlights broken up into hundreds of zones for extremely precise control. That's how far we've come in a relatively short period of time. Here's the problem though. I've noticed, and I'm guilty of this myself, okay, but I've noticed that many TV reviewers are still talking about blooming today as if it was just as bad as it was three years ago, and it is not. We have far less to complain about today than we used to. Perspective, I think, has been lost, and that's why I'm here right now. I think we need to collectively restore that perspective, especially because the fact is, and you're not gonna like this, but it's not gonna get any better. Now that isn't to say that it couldn't be better from a technical standpoint. Yes, a TV maker could throw 10,000 mini LED backlights and break them down into 8,000 zones. I'm just throwing up big numbers here, but exerting that kind of control is a monumental task. And more critically, it's extremely expensive. It's cost prohibitive. So even if a TV like that was made, and I know some of my friends out there are like, remember the Sony Z9D? Yeah, I remember the Sony Z9D, I was there. And it was good, but it wasn't that good. Again, we've just lost perspective. My point is that an LCD TV that elaborate would be so expensive, nobody would buy it. They just go get a QD OLED or a really big WRGB OLED like the G2 and call it a day. Okay, so like maybe 100 people, maybe, would buy it. But we're talking about TVs here, not Bugattis. I don't think we're getting limited run TVs. I'd love to be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Anyway, back to this notion that LCD TVs have been taken as far as they're gonna get in terms of backlight control and blooming. Look no further than the fact that news recently came out that Samsung Display is not going to make LCD screens any longer. They're all in on OLED tech. Now, that doesn't mean that Samsung Electronics isn't gonna make LCD TVs anymore. It just means that Samsung Display is moving on. And if that isn't a sign of the times, I don't know what is. And we can see further evidence that LCD TVs have maxed out in recent flagship TVs. One year, we'll get a TV that has amazing peak brightness, but the blooming isn't so tightly controlled. And then the next year, we'll get a TV that has tightly controlled blooming, but the peak brightness is lower. The year after that, we'll get a TV that's somewhere in the middle. That's because we've reached a point where certain trade-offs are unavoidable. So yeah, it's okay to hate blooming and want as little of it in an LCD TV as you can get, but 
Taken in the right perspective, that also means that you need to be prepared for slightly lower peak brightness or average picture level. The trade-offs will have to be made. Folks, I think we need to acknowledge that we've kind of reached peak LCD TV. While it is technically feasible to make them even more high performance, it's just cost prohibitive. So we need to take a look at how LCD TVs are behaving today and understand that you can have one thing or you can have the other, but you can't have both at the same time. Thanks as always for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please smash like and subscribe. Hit me up with a comment down below and here's two other videos I think you might like.